Hello everyone, all my dear juniors from medicine department, I hope you have done your theory exams well. Now it's time to go through practicals. And many of my juniors are requesting to upload the videos of clinical examination of various systems. But as you know, it will be a bit tough to record the video and upload it within short span of time as you are having practicals nearby. So on one part I am feeling bad, but I thought I will help as much as possible for my juniors. So I am here to just take you through the uh, like overall headings which will be helpful for your practical reading. So we will start with the CVS first. CVS case will be given as a short case for you. So no need to take history in that. So coming to the examination proper, first inspection in that four headings are there actually. Recordial shape, apical impulse, other visible pulsations over the precordium and scar mark. So inspection has to be done from the foot end. This is one important point, foot end. So we have to stand at the foot end of the patient while the patient is lying supine and observe for the precordial shape. So any bulging of the precordium will suggest what? Like cardiac abnormality before the maturation of the skeletal system. Okay. Majority of the times you can consider it as like childhood onset cardiac disease. So that is the only point related to the precordial shape. And suppose there is any structural changes, for example, pectus excavatum and or pectus carinatum. So such things, how is it related to CVS? So those things are the reason for ejection systolic murmurs and they are the risk factors for pulmonary hypertension. So only two things related to pectus changes. Then comes apical impulse. Again, you are standing at the foot end and trying to visualize the apical impulse. So, normally, you know the normal location of the apical impulse, fifth left fifth intercostal space, 0.5 to 1 centimeter, medial to midclavicular line. Suppose if you are not able to visualize apical impulse in the supine position, then what you have to do? Ask the patient to incline for 30 degree. Okay. First is supine. First try with the supine. If not able to visualize, Ask the patient to incline to 30 degree. Slight inclination. Even then, if the impulse is not visualized, ask them to slightly turn to left lateral. Left lateral side. Even then, if it is not visualized, then you can ask the patient to sit and lean forward. Sit and lean forward. Okay. And once, if you are able to visualize, you can just tell the location of the impulse. So that is about apical impulse. Then you have to visualize for other visible pulsations. Other visible pulsations at precordium. Mainly comes parasternal pulsations. Parasternal. Left and right. Then epigastric. Then suprasternal. And supraclavicular pulsations. So you just observe for these visible pulsations at the precordium. We can discuss the importance of each soon. Then comes what? Scar mark. So in CVS, what is the importance of scar mark? You can remember any straight uh, scar mark at the sternum. That is suggestive of what? Open surgery. Open surgery. Like probably CABG also. If the scar mark is inframemory, horizontal scar mark inframemory, Probably patient has undergone closed mitral volvotum. So only two things you can consider related to scar mark. So these are the headings in inspection. Coming to the palpation. So same thing, same two things are there in the palpation. One is again apical impulse. Actually here we have to consider it as apex beat. Apex beat. Okay. Apex beat. Namely, the location and the nature of apex beat has to be described. Then comes other pulsations. As we listed out, other pulsations are these things. Among these, mainly left to parasternal pulsation is very important. So, left to parasternal pulsation, we will look for parasternal heave, especially. That will suggest what? If there is presence of heave, that is indicative of right ventricular volume or pressure overload. Left parasternal. Pulsation. 
is suggestive of what? R V volume or pressure overload. Okay. So another reason is massively enlarged left atrium. These are two reasons for left parasternal heave or left parasternal lift. In total, we can consider it as left parasternal pulsation. Then coming to the right. So right parasternal pulsation. What will be the reason? See what the right parasternal pulsation. Any aneurysms of the aneurysm of ascending aorta. Aneurysm of ascending aorta might be the reason. Then comes what? Uh, suprasternal and supraclavicular pulsation. So these pulsations are seen in aneurysm of the arc of aorta and any hyperkinetic circulation states, for example, anemia or thyrotoxicosis or pregnancy, etc. We are left with epigastric pulsation. So this is again important. We have to use our thumb and we have to keep it at the epigastrium and feel for the pulsation. So that is suggestive of again two things, either RV, volume or pressure overload or underlying aorta aneurysm. So how to differentiate? I hope you all know based on the pulsation felt at whether pulp of the thumb or at the tip of the thumb. Suppose it is at the pulp, it is suggestive of what? Aortic aneurysm. Suppose it is felt at the tips, then probably it is because of the RV volume or pressure overload. So this is about other pulsations. Then comes the third heading that is thrills. So important thing is you have to feel thrill with the distal palm. Okay, distal palm. Whereas heave or lift should be felt with the proximal part of the palm and any sounds, hard sounds, if you want to feel for those, use the tips of fingers. So thrill is what? Palpable murmur. So use your distal palm and feel for the thrill. If what is the importance of thrill? It is the definite sign of the lesion which is underlying that particular site. Okay. So thrill is very much indicative of the lesion underneath. Then comes palpable sounds. Commonly, we consider palpable P2 in case of pulmonary hypertension. So use the tips of the finger and feel for the sound P2 at left second intercostal space. So if it is felt with the tips, you can consider palpable P2, which is seen in pulmonary hypertension. Similarly, palpable A2 will be seen in aortic stenosis and sometimes palpable S1 also, which is seen in mitral stenosis. So these are some palpable sounds even sometimes S3, S4 can be palpable, but to be very much practical, just observe for palpable P2 in case of pulmonary artery hypertension. So this is about inspection and palpation heading and some idea about that. Coming to the percussion of precordium, so majority of the times we will skip this part, but in practical exams, examiner will be very fond of asking how to do percussion. So we have to know the method and uh, coming to the contraindications, you can consider only three things. One is atrial fibrillation. Second one is if there is presence of hemoptysis, hemoptysis. Third one is infective endocarditis suspicion. Okay. So without history, sometimes it is tough to find out hemoptysis and even infective endocarditis also. But if they ask, these are the contraindications for percussion. Coming to the method proper, here mainly we will localize left heart border, right heart border and percussion of some important spaces. So first we will mark the right heart border. So how to do? See for example, here is the manubrium sternum. Okay, then clavicle here. Consider this as liver. So what we have to do? Mid clavicular line. In the mid clavicular line, from the second space, we have to keep on percussing downward. Second, third, fourth, fifth, like this. Once we get the this is first thing, number one. Once we get liver dullness, just go one space above. Okay, this is second one. One space above and start percussing towards the sternum. Like this. Till you get the dullness. If you get dullness here, mark this point. Then again, go one step above. Start percussing medially. Again, one step above. So, from usually from the third to fifth case, you have to percuss from lateral to medial side and mark the onset of dullness. And then if you join that line, that will form the right cardiac border. This is about right side. What about left? So if you want to mark the left heart border, start percussing from the left 
मिड एक्सिलरी लाइन मिड एक्सिलरी लाइन इन द लाइक द स्पेस इंटरकोशल स्पेस शुड बी द स्पेस वेर वी फिल्ड अपाइकल इम्पल्स यूजली इफ वी कंसिडर इट एज फिफ्थ स्पेस ओके सो सपोज दिस इज द मिड एक्सिलरी लाइन एंड फिफ्थ स्पेस हियर start purchasing again from lateral to medial side and at a point you will get dullness mark that similarly go one space above and start purchasing in the fourth space so you will get a dullness mark that similarly in the third space okay so this will form what left heart border but for this they have given a normal range so at third space third intercostal space if we consider from the mid part of the sternum the distance should be 4 cm 4 cm similarly in the fifth space this distance should be 10 cm suppose this is increased these values are increased then you can consider it as cardiomegaly cardiomegaly so left heart border will help in finding out the cardiomegaly so this is about right and left heart border another important space is second Okay, left second intercostal space. So, all of you know that. Usually, if we percuss at that second left intercostal space, it will be resonant. Suppose it is dull. Let me suggest you again pulmonary artery hypertension or idiopathic dilatation of the pulmonary artery. So, that is the importance. So, these three things are there when we come to percussion of the cardiac system. So, what is the benefit of percussion? One is to know about the cardiac size, like to find out whether there is cardiomegaly. Second one is, is there any pericardial effusion? Again, the width of dullness will be increased third one is to look for pulmonary artery hypertension so these are few benefits of percussion of the recording and at the end is about auscultation so you know auscultation you know about the areas of the precordium okay apical area tricuspid area pulmonary and aortic area so in each site you have to follow this okay even while writing and while examining also just Auscultate for first S1 and S2. Okay, and we know at mitral and tricuspid area we will focus mainly on the S1. Whereas in aortic and pulmonary area we will focus on S2 and split. If it is audible clearly, mention about split also at that particular areas. And especially in mitral and tricuspid area, auscultate for S3 and S4 if they are present. Mainly for you guys, the case which is given will not be in heart failure. So to some extent the patient will be stable. So most of the times you will not be able to. Uh, like auscultate for S3, S4. Next thing should be any additional sounds, mainly any clicks, ejection, systolic click, for example, and snaps like opening snap in the mitral stenosis. Those things have to be mentioned. And at the end, about murmur. Okay, so murmur. I want to tell you that there are few like that. There is a way to write about murmur. So you have to follow that. Don't worry about finding out the exact murmur. Okay, just you have to mention the proper pattern. That's it. No one will scold you for. A mistake, especially in murmur. Okay, so we'll discuss about the details. What details should be mentioned in murmur? So this is the pattern we have to follow when we are describing any murmur. Okay, so first you mention about the timing, whether it is systolic or diastolic murmur. I hope there will not be any difficulty in finding out just whether it is systolic or diastolic. Then observe for the pitch, that is sharpness or frequency. Okay, whether it is low pitch or high pitch, that you have to mention. Then any special named character which is given for that murmur. For example, they will use soft blowing murmur or crescendo decrescendo murmur or harsh uh, kind of character. Then you have to mention about the grade. So, what grade of murmur is it? Systolic and diastolic both have gradients. Then you mention whether the murmur is better heard with the bell of the stethoscope or with the diaphragm, and it is best heard at the height of inspiration or expiration, and if there is any conduction or radiation of the murmur. Students will be like sometimes confused whether to mention about dynamic auscultation. See, in all cases, no need to mention about the dynamic auscultation. Only if you are suspecting uh, regurgitated murmur, like regurgitated lesion, such as aortic regurgitation or mitral wall prolapse. In such cases, you can consider dynamic auscultation. It is not needed in other cases. So this is the pattern you have to follow. And one more important thing is uh, when doing auscultation, when you want to comment about S1, S2. Few will write that S1, S2 heard. Don't mention that. Okay. If the person is alive, definitely S1, S2 will be heard. So mention whether S1, S2 are normal or not. Okay. So when you are commenting, just comment S1 is normal. 
or S2 is normal like that or any abnormalities are there, then just mention that. Don't try to write S1, S2 heard. Examiners majority of the times will not like that terminology. So this is about the pattern or pro forma of cardiac examination. If I get time, definitely I will record the demonstration also in patient and I will upload it. Thank you so much and we'll uh, look forward for other system examinations also and I wish you all the best for your practicals also. Thank you.